Hi guys, welcome back to uh, another um, Sabbath School lesson with uh, Miss Cynthia and myself. Yes. Um, we have an exciting lesson for today, and of course we have our Bible quiz. But we're going to go ahead and, I don't think we have any announcements, do we? No. No, the, so. other than the obvious, you know, until further notice, this is how we're doing Sabbath School. So. It would be awesome if y'all would let us know on mm -hmm. Facebook or when you see us. Hey, I watched Sabbath School this week, mm -hmm. or last week. You can even comment on the YouTube, on this uh, video as well, Sorry. and actually, like, leave some comments of things you enjoyed, and maybe even some things you'd like us to do differently, maybe, perhaps. So well, we are all about learning, so. We might take it into consideration. Mm -hmm. We'll see. <laughs> Always the shrewd one, That's right? right. I'm going to keep it real. All right. After. Well, let's go ahead and begin with a word of prayer, then. Okay. Would you mind having prayer? I will. Yes, thank you. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity we have to come together today to review another wonderful lesson, to learn more about you, Lord. We pray right now that you'd be with us, help us, uh, lead us, inspire us, Lord, give us wisdom, and help us, again, to just reveal your word. In the name of Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. All right. We have a huge jump from last quiz when he was resurrecting mm -hmm. somebody. Now he is a... Being arrested and crucified. These, mm -hmm. This quiz is just all over the place. But that's where we are right now with our yeah. next one. That's, so. We are eventually going to get there. Now we're kind of, now it's ahead yes. versus behind, right? Yes. We go back and forth. So, okay. Well then, um, if, if you, Miss Cynthia, would be willing to look things up. I will look them thank up. Thank you. Then I will go ahead and lead us out on our quiz. So here we go. Question one. According to Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 45, just before his arrest, how many times did Jesus rebuke his disciples for sleeping when they should be praying or should have been praying? Okay. Yes, yeah. It was it A, one time, B, two times, C, three times, or D, not at all? So it's once, twice, three, or not at all. Well, I know he did. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it was three. I'm pretty sure it was three. So I would guess three. Now, three is always, you know, you got to be careful because... There's certain numbers in the Bible, and three is mm -hmm. one of them, but I do think this was All right, let's see if we can count it as you read. <clears throat> okay, what was it again? Uh, Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 45. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. 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 And he began to who were those? James John, and John. James and John. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even, in, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, nor, not as I will, but your will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again a second time he went away and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed for a third, prayed a third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. So he did pray three times. But it, I think he only rebuked them the first and the last time. He only rebuked them two times. There you go. And that's what I figured. I figured it was two times. I didn't know about the three, praying the three times. I, I knew he prayed three times. I of course, I'm, praying three. I'm doing the classic thing where I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure it was that after we already <laughs> know the answer, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, of course he did. That went wrong. It was B. What? That's okay. Oh, so it's a B. bad start. Bad All start. right. Well, maybe we can, you can make All it right, up. All right. I'll make it up. I'll make it up. Uh, question number two. According to Matthew 26, verses 48 through 49, how did Judas identify and betray Jesus? Was it A, with a handshake, B, with a hug, C, with a kiss, and D, pointing at him? Well, I, I know it's rude to point. It's very rude to point. But in the age of COVID, that would be the only one of these that would be acceptable. No, so. that's true. But I don't think COVID was around until very recently. Yes, yeah, so. With a kiss. 
He kissed him on the cheek. I believe so. That sounds right. So would you read Matthew 26, verses 48 and 49? Now his betrayer had given them a sign, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one, seize him. Immediately he went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Well, there you have it. It is, in fact, see with a kiss. Such a personal thing, too. Mm -hmm. It really is. You know, I'd rather have at least pointed. Mm -hmm. I do wonder why he chose that. I don't know if it was actually, if it was a cultural thing. It was, or it was, it was if how it you was, greet it. it was if how that you really was friend, how you right? greet people. I mean, I don't know. We don't really see that other places in there. It's like kind of one of the only times we really see I'm kiss. I think if she talked about it, I'm sure she did this our ages, but I can't think of what she said this time. But I wonder why. I think it was a greeting, though. Anyways, so it was I do kiss. know. I do know in the original Greek, not to get too far off, but I know that in Greek, um, I think it's the word to worship is proskuneo. Mm -hmm. And I believe it actually means kiss towards, fun fact. So it kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. It's kind of a devotion towards something. Yes. So anyways. And I know the European culture, right? You kiss, kiss both cheeks when you say hello. Maybe that's something that was there at that time. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. It seems very personal, though. Yeah. So you've made up for I'm yourself. Sad. You're one you're one, 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 one. one. All right. Number three. What did the disciples do when Jesus was arrested? This is in Matthew 26, verse 56. A, threatened the guards, B, fought the guards, C, followed the guards, or D, fled. There's a lot of Fs there. Ooh, I know Peter grabbed the sword to fight the guard. Mm -hmm. But did they, did the yeah, disciples all whole... fight the guards? Well, I don't want to say they fled. I, I know they, they did eventually too. flee, but... Okay, so it's uh, Matthew twenty six fifty six, and it's saying when they when he was first when he was arrested. When did the disciples do when Jesus was arrested? I want to say and it's they based fled. on Matthew, and okay. so it's hard to know because it's, hard it's to different. Know. Yeah. Okay, so what is it? Matthew twenty six fifty six. Yep. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. There you go. So based on Matthew 26, yeah. 56, that's yes. how it is. And so it's after all the other stuff happened, after he cut the ear and that kind of stuff. It's saying, because that's why I wanted to read the question again, because it's saying after he was arrested, so they fled. Okay. Number four, high priest Caiaphas in John 18, verses 13 to 14, yeah, you're going to have to flip over to John now, told the priest, it would be good if one man died for the people. He was suggesting... They mur he was suggesting they murder Jesus. He didn't realize he was prophesying this. A, all murdered men go to heaven. Or B, one man would be a sacrifice for the sins of all. I feel like this is an easy oh, one. Oh, that's an easy one. But yeah. this is a really great question because it brings to light a really great thing where he makes an unintentional prophecy, yes. right? and how God does that all the time with, mm -hmm. uh, with heathens and everybody else. Mm -hmm. he, he will have his prophecy come Or in this case, hypocrites, right? Hypocrites, it's absolutely. not necessarily just the heathens. It can right. be the hypocrites as well, right? I was thinking, you know, if we talked about last time, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, yeah. yes. Okay, so, um, and also King Cyrus, right? The one who was after? Well, he's the one who made, he, who he fulfilled it through. Right. And it's actually really crazy because this is an instance of God really calling his shot, so to speak. If you guys know what call your shot means, right? Like in golf, sometimes people will be like, I'm going to hit the ball right there. Right. And then they'll go and immediately just like nail the shot, yes, right? They and did it right, right like there. They said, yeah. yeah. Um, this actually happened with Isaiah. Z Isaiah actually named Cyrus yes. by name and Hundreds said, years, yeah, yes. that Cyrus is my servant, you know? And so when Cyrus saw that, it was mm -hmm. in the prophecy, then he was like, he was opened up. Well, I don't even know that necessarily he even saw it. Who knows? Oh, like, I don't know. I mean, Ellen White might say something That's what about she, that. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. I was going to say, she I don't said, even know. Like, it's just. Because in Prophets and Kings, that's yeah. what she talks about. Anyway, okay. sorry, we are rabbit holing, aren't we? What I was know. it again? John what? John, 18, verses 13 and 14. Okay, 18, 13, and 14, and one page over. And they led him away, Jesus, to Annas first, for he was the father in law of Caiaphas. 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 And he was, in, who was the high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it should be, that it was expedient for, I'm sorry, expedient that one man should die for the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was. Which is said earlier, and actually, it's in the context, again, not to go too down a rabbit hole, but it's in the context of when Jesus, when um, 
Lazarus was raised from the dead. The Sanhedrin all met together, and that became the idea was, it was sort of this idea of like, well, it's better that one person die than all of Rome come after us because the people are all so just like following this guy. We don't want an uprising, right? We got to maintain our power, right? Which is really what it was about, right? It was maintaining right. their own power. It had nothing to do with, we're afraid Rome's going to come in, right? They were all really afraid of their power and didn't like the people going after another person. Which again shows them just how much they didn't get it. Yep. Because he was to die for, one man was to die for all the people. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Number five, John often refuses to call himself by name, but rather says one of the disciples. In John 18, verse 15, what did he get to do? A, get close to the early trial. B, yell at Caiaphas. Or C, lead a revolt. Well, I feel like this one's easy too. Got close to the trial. Yeah, he got close to the yeah. early trial, yes. Yeah. So, John uh, 18, 15. Mm -hmm. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Another one. Now that the disciple was known to the high priest, and he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. Mm -hmm. Which is how John, and this is important because what John's really saying there as he writes his gospel is he's saying, I had an eyewitness account of yes. this, right? Yeah. I was actually here. It's important to realize that John's gospel, sorry, I'm all over the place today. John's gospel, I find this stuff really interesting. I do too. Right? I, think, I think it's more interesting to mm -hmm. go into it deeper. So John's gospel was written later than the other three gospels. Right. And that it probably was already known, especially the Gospel of Luke, it was probably already known. That was probably very widespread. But a lot of heresies and problems had come up in the church. And so essentially what this is like is nowadays, not to, I'm trying to pick a good example of it. I, can, I think I can use this safely. There are people nowadays who are Holocaust deniers, right? right? That claim the Holocaust never happened, right, right? Right, and claim and start fabricating pieces of World War II. Well, it's like you're there's still a few people who actually lived and survived World War II, including right. like including the, the soldiers Jews, who, right? The, well, the soldiers soldiers too, and Jews, yeah. Yes, who, and it would be right. like it would be like a soldier who actually freed the Jews going back and writing this to people who are like, mm, I don't know about that. And they're like, no, no, no. You've all heard the stories. The stories are true, and I'm going to tell you it one more yeah. time. That's what John's doing here. Because no one there has ever... Say, I saw it. Yeah, no one here had ever seen Jesus at right. this point. Like, this is a generation removed from when Jesus was actually on the earth. John's one of the only people left who actually saw it. Yeah. And you know what's amazing, too, is the fact that it was written later and everything, too. How, how God inspired them mm -hmm. and left it and put it on their hearts so detailed. Because you think, I, I forget what happened last week in such detail. And here he is writing a mm -hmm. whole book, such detail years later. And it's because God inspired him. And it makes sense that a lot of the stuff that John mentions, John's the only one who mentions um, the raising of Lazarus, mm -hmm. which kind of makes sense because it was probably well known at the time. And so I think the other gospel writers were trying to report on things that maybe weren't as well known because everyone was like, oh yeah, and then you bring a guy back to life. Like, well, yes, of course. Of course he did that. Right. But did you know that he also walked on water? But you know, also, <laughs> and also turned water into wine. The, the, what happens just before we started taping, the hindsight. You mm -hmm. often don't realize how important something small might have been. So some of these things were small I at the time when they happened to John, but hindsight and after seeing what's happened and fulfilled, those little parables mm -hmm. and things like that mattered so much more. Mm -hmm. And so when you when you wait a second and let it marinate for a second, I think he was able to put more into it because he knew it was important. Now, I don't know which order John wrote his books. Like, I don't know whether John was written first or re whether the book of John was written first or the letters John 1 through 3. I don't know when those were written. I'm inclined to believe that John 1 may have been written before any of the others. And then two and three, I don't know, but I think the book of John was written, I think it was John one, then the book of John, and then Revelation was the last one that he wrote as far as like yes. letters, but I don't know. And of course there's probably other letters that haven't survived, right? Well, I would think too that uh, Revelation would be last because once you have Revelation, you've seen those, it would kind of maybe almost taint your mm -hmm. other writings. So I would think that would happen yeah. last. Yeah, it's So possible. we're talking about the arrest and crucifixion. Yes. So we're going to get so, back to there that. There you go. So the answer was... <laughs> the answer was get close to the early trial, yes. I guess. Uh, number six. The people were offered a choice to kill Jesus or this rebel. Um, John 18, 39 through 40. And what are my choices? Oh, your choices, sorry. A, Pilate, B, Caiaphas, C, Barabbas, or D, Satan. 
Again, these are too easy. Barabbas oh, is obviously We all know this story really yes. well, right? So, 1834. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered him, Are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you about this concerning me? What is it? 34 to what? 39 and 40. Oh, okay. I was like, that doesn't feel right. Okay, so 39. But you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Then they all cried again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. He was also a false prophet. Yes, he was. Which he is had read an insurrection. Right, yes. something that I learned when I read Desire of Ages, so that he was a false prophet, a false Jesus. Well, and the funny thing is, is Barabbas was actually accused of what the yes. Jews were trying to claim was the yes. danger. Yes. That's the irony here. And they're yes. like, no, give us that guy. Even yeah. though we claim this is what Jesus and this is the real danger of this guy, yep. let's go ahead and release Barabbas instead. The true scapegoat, right? right? We had done those things. And the man on the cross who Jesus said, I'll tell you this day, you're, you know, you'll be with me, was actually a follower of Barabbas. Mm -hmm. Which is so interesting. Yeah. Anyways. They were probably all there together and it was kind of a, oh, well, sorry, quick change in execution yeah. order, right? Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so the answer was, of course, Barabbas. Mm -hmm. That was C. Number seven, while on the cross, a thief said Jesus was innocent, unlike him. Jesus told him, <clears throat> uh, Luke 23, 40 through 43, A, he was being honest. <laughs> <laughs> C, he would go to heaven, or C, he was doomed. I know if I was up there, well, okay, actually, if I was up there, I probably wouldn't even have the, like, mental fortitude to be able to respond right. to this person. Right. But I would be like, I'd be like, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. What you speak is true, as you said, as they would have went. So uh, that's affected. But what are we, where to find the answer? Um, Luke 23, 40 through 43. 40 through 43. Sometimes I answer the question before it's hard. Okay, so, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, I'm going to start back at 39. Okay. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing that you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then Jesus said, Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you are coming to your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. So he'd be in paradise. Mm -hmm. This, to me, is something so much deeper than what it is. Because a lot of times I've met people who, who think that they can live life and at the very end say, I love you, Jesus, and they're saved. And there's two things about that. You don't know if you'll have time, A, mm -hmm. to confess and say, I love you, Jesus, and be mm -hmm. saved. But also... This man had a, tr God knows our hearts. He had a true conversion of heart. And if he had gotten down off of that cross and somehow managed to live, his life would have reflected acceptance of Jesus. And so it, it's a dangerous thing to think that you have to live and love Jesus and be converted because you don't know your own, you, you don't know your own heart, God does. And, the, and to piggyback off that, there is the, how can we know that his life would be different? Well, Jesus said, exactly. no, I know that it's genuine. Yes. And Jesus actually does see the heart, yes, right? He like, heart. It's very easy to be like, well, who knows what would have happened? Well, Jesus knew. Jesus that's knew. the difference. Like, Jesus knew. Jesus knew. And so, so that's a game you don't want to play. You don't want to live your life to live it. You want to live it for Jesus. It is interesting, though, that just as we see the moment here, right, when Jesus is about to die, we see two group. we have two different yes. people, right? The person who's like, well... If I could, I'd get off here by my own power. Like, save yourself. You're, you're gifted with miraculous powers. Just save yourself. And you save know? me. Like, and save me, too, while yeah. you're at it. That would yeah. be great, right? Well, and then you have sort of the other one. Like, if it's, like, in your power, it would be really great to do this. Like, if there's anything, like, genu like, genuine about this. And Jesus, I think there is a part of that that Jesus is like, no, I'm the real deal. And, like, if you're honest, like, if you're serious about this, yeah. yeah. Because he feels like the way he says it to him, that he actually gets it. Mm -hmm. And it's not a kingdom here on earth is how I've always mm -hmm. thought of it. And it, he's saying, I'm, I'm, and he also says, don't take me off of here. I'm paying my reward. I, I, I deserve mm -hmm. this. I deserve to die. He's not asking to be saved from what he's going through. He's asking that he'll be in heaven. Like he's asking for the next mm -hmm. one, which I think is, like you said, it's, it's important to repent, confess, and be genuine, and to but, uh, confess to it. And, to and I it. think we see a, just one last thing. We see this in the... Um, these are the two groups of people 
We see the fulfillment of these two groups of people and these two ways of thinking when Jesus comes back, when the new Jerusalem comes down. You have the the evil dead rise up, right, right and right. attack the city because yes. it's sort of a, well, we can take it on our own, right? right? Let's reap the benefits of this as yes. much as we can. Let's try to reap this. But we you have the other people this. who are like, yeah, like we, we deserve it. We can take it by force, right? We'll just have it. Why not? You know, let's use it as much as we can. And then you have the other people who are like, I'm really glad you saved me, <laughs> right? Yes. Like, yes. And how sad it is that like, it's like, no, you guys don't deserve, like we don't deserve this. You don't deserve any of this. None of us deserve any of this. Why are you doing this? Why are you still so adamant about this? In fact, my wife was always confused as to why there were two resurrections, right? Why would you kill everyone only to bring them back a thousand years, right? Raise them back up. Like, it feels like that's, that's awful. Right. Well, the idea is that apparently the last question left in heaven after the thousand years of all of us going through the books and stuff is it's a, well, maybe if they had one more chance. Well, maybe if they had one more chance. That makes sense. And yeah. this was their second chance. Yeah. And what do they do? Right and what, they're right? like, let's take the city. Right. <laughs> it's that they never changed, right? That's like, true. and you know, there's two things I think about too. Is one, Satan knows he's gonna he's gonna lose. Satan knows he's gonna lose in the end. He knows, but he's yeah. still gonna fight to the end. Yeah. So what makes you think that he'll ever stop fighting for us? He won't. He will never no. stop fighting to distract you, to lead not. you astray. You have to stay vigilant because mm -hmm. he will always keep fighting. And number two is um, how just God is because in the end, before the, the wicked are destroyed for good, they will come to it and say, you know what, I would not have been happy and you are just, it is just that I die because I wouldn't have been happy. This wasn't, you will never be my Lord. You will never, I will never take you as my God. But it's also sad because it's, it's also, sad. it's a it's sad so thing just. because it's like a, but I don't even care about any of that, I want the city, right? No, like, no, it, no, it, no, I'm it, talking like, about even after they take the city, uh, Ellen, well, and July. Yeah, yeah talks about that, right? Where they all will see Christ's life mm -hmm. and they'll see it and they will say, I will never accept you as my God. I mean, this is just, that's what I'm saying after they try okay, to get the okay, city. Okay. Yeah, they, they will. And so it, it's so just because they will die knowing that, you know what? I wouldn't have been happy in heaven anyways. I didn't want to live by your rules, God, basically. Anyway, sorry. And, it, and he says that if they'd had a chance too, they, they still would have turned, they would have gone right back to their mm -hmm. rooms. So. Anyway, rabbit holing all the time. Yep. All right, last question, finally. A rich man asked for Jesus' body in Luke 23, verses 50 to 54. His name was A, Joseph, B, Arimathea, C, Pilate, or D, Shalom. Okay, I was thinking Nicodemus, but then when you said Joseph, I remember I used to think it was his father, but I think it's Joseph. I think, it's I think Joseph. they, they, skip, they, um, Script the bottom of the barrel here. So it's, uh, for these answers, it's in Luke 23, verses 50 to 54. Very entire the quiz. Okay, so, and now, and now behold, there was a man named Joseph, a council member, a good and just man. He had not consented to their decision indeed. He was from Arimathea, the city of the Jews, he, um, who himself was also waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. So the funny... First off, a lot of times we only give Nicodemus credit, but clearly Joseph was also right, exactly. like, exactly. Uh, had there an impression had been made upon him as well. Mm -hmm. But also, this is one of those, you gotta be careful about your critical reading, right? Mm -hmm. Like they teach you for like studying for the ACT and stuff, they're always like, oh well, try to pick out key words and stuff. But if you did that here, you might be like, well, is it Joseph or is it Arimathea? I don't know, right? Like, right, yes, that's true. Because <laughs> so both it would be Joseph it is, of Arimathea. Yes, so it is a Joseph. All right. All right. Unscramble it. We finally did. Well, yeah, right. We finally made it through the quiz. Um, so the unscramble question is, Herod was very glad to see Jesus at his trial. This was because, and you can find the answer in Luke 23, 8 through 9, and it's, et, the scramble version is, ed twine ot esi slicrum. All right. All right. I like it. So obviously he is the first one, right? Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, let's see. He... he Dow, Dane, don't. Wanted? Wanted. Wanted to, oh, to see? see miracles. Oh. We had trouble with the wanted. You, you nailed it. You did it. Good job. Yeah, what can I say? I had my moments. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So. so, transitioning into our lesson yes. now. This week's lesson is. Um, Actually, something I mentioned briefly in the adult sap school last week when I taught it, but it's the um, it's when Jesus was on the uh, 
Mount of Olives, and his disciples are talking about, um, are talking kind of, they're, they're having a moment where they're standing looking out over the city, right? And looking at this. And I mean, it was a beautiful city. They yes. say that the splendor of the temple was the only, that even, it even rivaled Solomon's temple in, back in its day. Right. That it had been so beautified throughout the generations that right. it was really, it was really beautiful. And Jesus gives them this question and says, well, I tell you the truth, you're looking at Jerusalem right now, and there's also a part where he kind of, um, where he laments over Jerusalem as well, yes. because she, because uh, the city rejected him, yes. right? The Jews so rejected him. And he said, the temple's going to fall and not one stone will be left on another. And then, they then, the disciples then ask him, what, um, what will be, what, when will these things happen and what will be the sign of, his, of your coming? And as we were talking before about hindsight, right, right, the, right, what led to that discussion was we were talking about the lesson beforehand and this idea that we are so gifted with the ability of, with the, um, with the gift of hindsight yes. that we have seen now the destruction of Jerusalem. We haven't seen the second coming yet, but Jesus answers both these questions at the same time. And Ellen White actually in um, great controversy. That's actually where she picks up the right. story in Great yes. Controversy is with the destruction of Jerusalem, drawing using this story to draw the parallel. She starts with him so. with Jesus uh, being sad about, about mm -hmm. looking down and being sad. And then she him. went into how the prophecies were actually fulfilled. Right. Now, I don't and think it. that we said um, what lesson we're on. Oh, we're on lesson verse. thirty-two. Yes, and the memory verse is. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So I know you guys, are, I'm sure you all were, oh, and that's in Luke 21, verse 36. What a very accurate verse for right now. Yes, it that's is. A really good one. It's a really good one for the context of the yes. story, right? So I'm sure you all knew the memory verse already, okay. but now you know the context of yes. when it was talked about, right? So we see signs all the time, right? right? We see signs for all sorts of things. And there's sort of, there's different signs. I have a joke with my, uh, I have a joke with, first it was with my sister because I would drive, I was responsible for driving her to and from a lot of places because she's my younger sister, right? right? We've talked about yes, this a little bit before. The bitterness of that, yes. yes. Anyways. So I, uh, in all fairness though, I do owe her a little bit of credit because I, because of that I got a car. So that was sort of the stipulation is I had to kind of ferry her around everywhere, but at least I got a car, right? So what you're saying is little sisters are the best. Okay, continue. Continue, I like it. I, I like think that's a blanket that. statement and not at all accurate of the reality We don't the have time to, to go no. through all that. Yeah, no. Well, it's, anyways. I think it's a good statement. Yes. I would make a joke whenever I'd be driving. So you'll see like stop sign ahead, you mm -hmm. know, or warning like turn ahead or something and every time I'd see one of those signs I was like I'd point at it and then a little bit later when it happened I would say see the prophecy has come to fruition <laughs> and I still do it every so often when something will like be a prediction or a sign of something I'm just like oh it happened look it's exciting you know I actually have something real quick too <clears throat> to discuss the importance of understanding the sign because you may you may see the sign but not understand it mm -hmm. same problem <clears throat> I was first driving and I had to go get my dog from the vet. She had just had surgery. And I was terrible. I still am at terrible directions. Terrible. And I was on this road. I didn't know where I was. I still couldn't to this day get you that road in Cleveland. I have no idea where I was at. But, so I see a sign that says dip ahead. <clears throat> so I slowed down probably from 40 to about 20. You know, thinking, little dip, no problem. And it wasn't a dip. It was a huge speed bump. And uh, going 20 miles an hour, hitting that speed bump, my poor dog was thrown to the ceiling and thrown to the ground, <laughs> and I don't know how she didn't bust her stitches open. She never rode with me again. But had I been paying attention, so it said dip, not speed bump. It said dip. Mm. It said dip. It said mm. dip. But not knowing and paying attention to looking just like that sign, but not looking at what's happening around and paying attention, you know, I could have severely hurt my dog. So I think that's just kind of something to think about: is just because you see the sign, if you don't understand it, it's just as Dangerous is not seeing the sign. But, but there is something in that story that you understood that when the speed bump happened, you didn't disregard it and say, well, I'm sure that sign had nothing to do with it. This is clearly a speed bump. That was it. That said, it was warning of a dip. Maybe there's still a dip coming and I need to wait it out, right? And right. be afraid, right? right. And worry that. that that's going to happen. Well, I think there is something about that of another reason why it's worth it. Even if we don't, even if we can't predict what's going to happen, 
at least when it happens, we'll recognize the right. sign when it's happening and be like, oh, this is what that meant. Okay, right? I guarantee you it woke me up to drive, pay more attention to my driving from then on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in all fairness, it, doesn't all, it isn't always clear either. I mean, right. early Adventists didn't realize, they didn't recognize a lot of the prophecies when they happened because one, they were, weren't even alive and no one really did when it was happening. A lot of the things about like the Catholic Church's power and stuff, right. like right. Ooh, like coming into power and then like losing that power, right? Because that they didn't recognize, was yeah, they didn't, And yeah, they didn't have access to the, uh, the few people who did have access to the Bible just didn't know, right? right. And they didn't have an understanding of prophecy or right. any of those sorts of things. So when Adventism, they're like, oh, wait, this and this and, oh, this is exciting. So sometimes even hindsight, right? Like, so, yes. so it's worth looking back on these things. Um, I think this is kind of something to, mm -hmm. to look at you. So, yeah, so the question is, would you go ahead and turn yeah. to Matthew 24? Sure. We shouldn't do this, okay? So let's, let's go ahead and read through Matthew 24, starting in verse, where do we want to start? Mm, let's see here. Um, so yeah, three. So okay. starting verse three. And go into what yeah. you think. Um, Probably. Right let's go ahead and start stop okay. there right then. Yeah. Okay. So now, as he sat with Jesus <clears throat> on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, "Tell us, when will these signs be, and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age?" Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come to come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that you are not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For the nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So there's a lot of things in there, and it keeps going on and talks more right. about the Great Tribulation right. and signs and different like natural disturbances and right. stuff. But I think we can we get a good idea yes. about things there. And as you're listening to that, I mean, I'm thinking in my own head, things definitely all this is happening now, mm -hmm. and how even this past year in 2020, how much love has just waxed cold mm -hmm. in this world. It's it's insane. And prophets, I mean, prophets can mean a lot of things, and I think that's one of the reasons. So you've noticed. We always try to go to the Bible and be like, this is what the Bible says. And then yes. we're very clear when it's like, well, no, actually, Ellen Weiss says this, or right. there doesn't seem to be much evidence for that, right. you know, based right. on the Bible. And the reason for that is it warns so much against yes. false teachers and yes. prophets. It just warns so much about them. And I very much believe in Ellen G. White. I think mm -hmm. she was a prophetess of God, absolutely. But one of the things that she always did, too, was she went to the Bible. Mm -hmm. All throughout mm -hmm. her passages. And she was always about, test what I say right. by the Bible. Right. Test exactly. what I say by the exactly. Bible. Exactly. But it is important to say this is in the Bible and this is over here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah. So the question was, what were some of the signs of the second coming? Right. What were some? So of the... some of the signs are evidently, you know, famines and pestilence, mm -hmm. which is disease, mm -hmm. and um, various earthquakes. I mean, how how much have you heard your parents or even you thought? tornado in this location that's crazy or an earthquake over here or, or look at the number of hurricanes we had last yes. year yes <laughs> oh my goodness it's definitely and in, definitely increasing weather wise mm -hmm. you know the pestilence we have COVID-19 we have a pestilence right now happening mm -hmm. and different parts of the country that that has caused more famine for some people in America we are still very blessed in most locations we have people who are hungry here yes but I'm saying a like, true famine of having to eat dirt and mm -hmm. you know that's happening places mm -hmm. so all these things are happening absolutely and I mean, it warns about false prophets. It also says, oh, yes. Jesus says, many will come in my naming. Yes. In my name. He says, and I am the Christ and will deceive many. Yes. It was happening right there in his time, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Right there in that moment, mm -hmm. it was already starting to happen. So, you know, just it has been happening. And, and with TV, it spreads Jesus' word, but it also spreads so much falsehood. Mm -hmm. So, it does. I would say that those are all definitely happening. Yeah. Now. Um,. 
Interestingly, there's actually only one that it says that when this happens, then the end will come though. And I think a lot of times we're like, well, look at all these things happening. It's got to be any day now, right? It's got to be any day now. Well, again, though, these things have been happening, but there's one particular one. Did you catch what it was? I did because I read the lesson. <laughs> Um, but I think I've also heard this preached on before too. <laughs> so there's that. That's how I know. I think it's important because Jesus wants us all in heaven. He mm -hmm. wants us all in heaven. He is working for us, not against us. Yep. So of course, how do we do that? We preach His word to all the nations. So right here at the very end, it says, "In this gospel of the kingdom, shall will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come." Which is again great because it tells you. Everyone heard, yes. and there will come a point on earth mm -hmm. when everyone has heard the message. Everyone, everyone alive, every yes. single living person will have heard the message, yep. and that's when it'll happen. That's when the second coming will happen. Not sometimes don't you wish saying. you were one of those last people to like, like, sometimes I wonder if I want to be one of those last people to get it, because then like, it'll be instant. It'll be like, oh man, they said it, it's happening, cool. Like, yeah, you know, that is true. <laughs> that would be kind of nice, right? Like, Jesus is coming. He is coming. You know, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. I, Talk about strong faith. Said, right? <laughs> or it could shake you hard because you just heard it and now bad things are happening, so you haven't mm -hmm. had time to let the faith set in. It is it possible. Could go it way. could go either way. It could go either way. That's true. So, but I do think that's happening. Mm -hmm. to, I, especially with, um, it's, I think the lesson says too, it hasn't happened yet, obviously, because he's not here. Mm -hmm. There are some people who still don't know or have, a, have enough knowledge to make a good choice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, with videos and internet and radio and in countries where they are so censored people people are still passing secret messages and doing secret bible studies it, it is happening and it is happening quickly it'll happen it's happening faster and faster there's more and more ways to reach people good bad otherwise there's more and more ways to reach people and it's actually interesting if you keep reading i mean he gives several parables as well um there's several different parables he gives a pair. So first he warns, he tells you exactly how it's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. He tells you what the great tribulation is going to be like. He tells you, um, and he actually warns several times about false Christ, actually. Yes. He's really stuck yes. on this thing, right? Like, it doesn't have to be, I am Jesus. It could be someone who says he is preaching Jesus. Or that he's going to be a savior to people, yes. right? Or like, you can only trust in me. I need to be, like, you need to trust in me, right? right. Like, I'm the one who's going to save all you from this predicament. Which I think to me, kind of, as I've gotten older and listened to this stuff, not stuff, but listen to this, I was always like, you know what? I'm going to recognize if someone says he's Jesus because I'm like, I'm not going with you. Well, first of all, we're not to even interact or look or watch that stuff because it will deceive you. It's, mm -hmm. it's Satan. He's going to deceive you. And you may think, no, I won't be deceived, but you will. But number two, I think it's not just somebody who says, I am Christ. I think it's important to know there are pastors who are preaching the wrong message. Or even politi uh, pastors, politicians, some family right, members, you, there's people of all sorts. And like, yeah. too. But you look towards these, I think, I think of pastors specifically, because you look at pastors and think mm -hmm. you can trust them. And you can, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you can't, but there are pastors who maybe not even, don't even know they're doing it, but it's just, that's what they believe, is what they've taught, and they haven't gone to the Bible and really studied themselves to know what the truth is, and so they're passing along that false information. So it's not just somebody walking around crazy with a board saying, I'm God. It's, it's, it's like that too. It's in the churches too, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm mean, not just Adventists. I'm talking all churches, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm talking more other churches than, than Adventists sometimes, but you know, anyways, just something to think about for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. But yeah, he gives several different uh, parables. One is the parable of the fig tree, parable of a, the faithful servant and the evil servant. And my personal favorite is the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. And the reason I like the wise and foolish virgins is, so one of the big reasons we teach about, and this is, goes back to something I said earlier, and we can, we can and I think we can end on this. Will you go ahead and uh, read the, um, the parable of the virgins? Will do. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to, the, to the meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. 
And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him into the, into the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came unto, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. And there's a lot of, so first, a bit of a context. This is hard to translate to nowadays because our weddings are very sharp and right. punctual, right? right? Like it was a much more, it's a much more, cult, that's a very cultural thing, right? right? Weddings are much more of a planned out sort of formal event for us, but for most other cultures, weddings are the are they're much more long. Yes. They're much more long term. You're not really sure how things are going to go. You know, by at the beginning of the week, we're going to start. By the end, I'll be married, yeah. right? Like, right. And in long between, the there's going to be a lot of parties. There's going to be a lot of preparations. There's going to be a lot of just fun happening. Yes. You know, yes. and it is it's considered. It's it's basically a holiday. It's yes. exciting. It's a very exciting time for them. But what happens here is so you have these. Um, they're called virgins, right? But it was an understanding that, like, the bridesmaids were kind of like how we have matrons of honor now, right. you know? Like, you have matrons and maids, you know? Yes. Well, so the, married. Yeah, and yeah. that's the idea. See, these are a bunch of unmarried uh, women, right? right? And they have their lamps. They're all ready, waiting for when the groom's finally going to come, you know, when the groom's going to show up, okay? And they're waiting. And apparently this is a common thing, right? They're waiting, they're waiting. And some, what eventually happens, though, is not just five of them fall asleep. Oh. All of them fall asleep. And that's so key. They and all it fall is asleep. very key. That's a very important piece. We're all equal in mm -hmm. that way. We all fall asleep. So then some wake up. Some, uh, some they wake, all wake uh, yeah, up. They all wake up when it happens, right? They right. all wake up. But some are like, oh, well, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. What, what should I do? And they're like, well, I, I can't help you right now. Right. Go, go find out on your own. Go get what you need to do on your own. But there's not enough time left. No. Right? They miss. They miss it. They miss their chance. So I always take it as there's sort of two key pieces there. One, as we said, they all fall asleep. And right. this is what I was saying before. Of a lot of times, it's not that the prophecies are there because, oh, now I'll predict. I'll know exactly how things are going to happen. Adventist history is actually filled with versions of that, where people have tried to do that. And it's really actually... It's sad that that's the case, but it's very amusing to look back at some of the things they thought were going to be a big deal because of what was going on in right. the world at the time. You read some of like Uriah Smith's things, for instance, and you're just like, this is crazy stuff. Like, this would never have happened. But he's just like, no, this is what's going to happen, right? right? It's not about that so much as it is a, we're preparing, this is our oil, right? We're preparing now. We're yes. getting things ready. We have plenty of stuff. We need to keep continually studying the prophecies right. even to the point of like even if we're like well i don't know if he's going to come back i just don't know you know i don't know i mean doubt's normal right yes. it is it's a very important piece of yes. that's actually one of our things right is uh deal with, deal with doubt. doubt yeah 12 deal with doubt and you notice it's near the time of the end yeah. right right before rejoice in the lord yeah. it's right before the end yeah. right so dealing with doubt is a very important thing and so I take that as the falling asleep, right? We, we all fall asleep, but some of them have been studying. Some of them have been waiting for the signs, and they recognize, oh, the signs are here. And the other people are like, oh, oh, are you sure? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Well, how can I learn more? It's like, it's, it's too late. It's too late. You can go and try to find people, like go over to these people, and I hope you have enough time, but I, I can't do anything for you, you yeah. know? And so what happens whenever they don't share and they, they try to go get the oil and come back and they're denied? They're going to get bitter, mm -hmm. mad, mm -hmm. and probably act out. Yep. I'm sure God's if you read the rest of the story, you know? yeah, mm -hmm. they probably would have tried to yep. ruin the wedding because and they weren't part of it. I and mean, that's what's going to happen in the end time. You know, people who haven't, yep. don't have their oil filled, they weren't ready. Well, now they're going to lash out. So we're going to end on a thing that we've said multiple times and I talked about last week with the adults and actually... I think this is Satan's greatest deception of all, is the illusion that we have time. Yeah. He wants you to believe you have enough time, right? Because he knows that then he already has you. He has you because he, by convincing you you still have time, it's this convincing you of, oh, so you can keep me in mind, right? I get to keep holding on to you. And sometimes I wonder if it's a self-delusion as well. He's like, maybe I just keep having time, right? right. But there's also a, he knows that, I mean, it's the idea of, so, I have a story to illustrate this. My sister and I, we wrote a, um, we went in and we bought a television together, okay? Mm -hmm. And this, the rule was, 
We, 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 we even wrote up a contract and everything. We both signed it, okay? Yes. We're like kids, okay? We write up a contract and everything, and it's that, okay, I get it for one year, and then she gets it for one year, and we'll alternate back and forth. Do you know how much I tried to delay that year and try to keep that year and try to be like, well, no, really, when was it real? Do we, is it even dated? You know, right. is it even this, right? Because again, what is time? It's, it's the home field advantage, right? right? It's the idea of like, well, I know it's mine now. If I can just keep pushing this back, I know it'll still be mine. And that's Satan's whole end, yeah. get end time strategy. He's not trying to win. He's just trying to take as many people down with him. Just and wait him out. He already has all these people. His numbers can only shrink, yeah, right? And right. he's trying to keep them from shrinking. So again, it's so key yeah. that the thing that we've heard again and again and again, and I know you are, guys are sick of hearing it, but nobody knows when Jesus is going to come back. And, you know, it, and I don't mean that like nobody knows. It could be years from now. I mean that nobody knows it could be tomorrow. Yeah. You know, it's, so. it goes back to our Bible quiz, which sometimes it does with, with the thief on the cross, right? You have to, li you can't wait till the very last nope, you moment. Can't. You, you have can't. to be ready. Yep. And so, uh, just real quickly, something that was in our lesson that was interesting, I thought, and I'll take a picture and put this in our, in our, um, on Facebook, I will do it. But what should we be doing while we wait for the second coming? And so, here are some things that we should be doing. Not only do we have our steps to Christ, right? To getting our, getting closer to God. Not only do we have, let's fill our oil, let's fill our lamps mm -hmm. with the fruits of the Spirit. But also, let's stand constantly on guard, keeping strict watch over ourselves and praying that the enemy won't take us by surprise. Mm -hmm. We need to be purifying their souls by obedience to the truth. We need to combine earnest working for the salvation of souls. Talk of the speedy appearing, the speedy appearing of the Son of Man. Yeah, search, we just that. Yep, search the scriptures to learn God's plan and strive to carry out that plan. Mm -hmm. Seek for strength from God in order to know His will and to do that will. And we need to humble our hearts before God, before God and confess our sins. Mm -hmm. So I think these things are just some things kind of to snapshot look at. <clears throat> They're really important things. Yeah, those are prayer. Yeah, I'll close with prayer. Okay. Those powerful. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the wonderful gift of not just hindsight, but your word first and foremost. Thank you so much for um, not just leaving us in the dark, but you do give us uh, oil for the lamp that is the belief in you, right? We have a light thanks to uh, your son, Jesus, and we have oil for to keep our faith strong in that through the Bible. Um, please come quickly. We look so forward to be able to get off this uh, sin-filled uh, world and we, um, in the meantime, help us to stay vigilant and help us, most importantly, now that we have these, this knowledge, help us to have the fervency and the vigor to um, spread it to others so that as many people as possible can join us uh, with you one day. Thank you for all these things. In thy name, amen. Amen. See you next time.